Hello and welcome to the GCN News Show. In today's show, we attempt to pronounce Belgian names correctly, ports from the cyclocross world, a hangout with Chrissy Wellington, one of the driving forces behind the Women's Tour de France stage, Tour de France 2014 wildcards and transfer news. And don't forget, we'll be giving away more GCN bottles. We've got Caption of the Week, Selfie of the Week, and as always, Tweet of the Week. Wicked. The cyclocross worlds took place in Hugeheide in the Netherlands this weekend. Belgian dominance was, as usual, predicted and almost happened, with the Belgians taking seven medals. On day one, the Belgians swept the junior men's podium before the women took to the muddy course later in the day. The predicted battle between Mariana Voss and Katie Compton didn't materialise. Voss rode away to victory, followed by Italian mountain biker Ava Lechner and British and European champion Helen Wyman. Uh, amazing crowds and all yelling uh, and screaming my name around the course. And of course uh, that, uh, that helps you, but still you have to push yourself. And um, I was in the lead with Ava Lechner in the, in the first lap. And, I didn't feel too good, but I tried to power away on the, on the hill and then had a little gap and I knew uh, that could be enough. This was the first cyclocross world championship podium to be swept by riders on disc brakes. Could this be a sign of things to come? Day two saw the under 23 men take to the course first. Van Aert blasted away and had 20 seconds by the end of the first lap and never really looked like he was going to be caught. The Belgians held the podium for most of the race before Van der Poel surged on the last lap and rode into third. The future looks fast for Belgian and Dutch cyclocross as Van Aert's average speed would have placed him third in the elite men's race that took place later that day. The main event on Sunday was the elite men's race. The race boiled down to a battle between Stibar and Nice with mistakes separating it in the end. Stibar crashed on the penultimate lap, Nice got a gap, then Nice bobbled allowing Stibar back. On the final lap, Stibar applied the pressure and things fell apart for Nice. Stibar took his third world title and Nice rolled in second with Kevin Powell's third. With Stibar's goals now lying on the road, the rainbow jersey looks like it won't be seen very often next cross season. You know, I was just, it's, it's maybe different when you have like pressure that uh, you are really full-time cyclocrosser and for me it was like just going for um, uh, full preparation for the road season just to come uh, yeah, to the cyclocross to do one race, world championship and you know, I didn't feel like it's world championship for the moment except the crowd which were amazing. And um, but yeah, I was really, I was just enjoying the race, and I thought, okay, I just go too far for the podium. Caption of the week: Check out this photo, and the winner was Paul Baker with broken head tube. And this week, we want to have your caption for this photo of Niels Albert in a spot of bother at the World Championships at Hogeheide. A women's Tour de France has taken one step closer to becoming reality. The women will race on the Champs Elysees on the final day of the tour. This must be a step in the right direction, so we spoke to Chrissy Wellington, one of the driving forces behind the movement, and Rochelle Gilmore of Wiggle Honda about what La Course means for women's cycling. This really marks an incredibly important step forward. Having a one-day race on the Champs-Élysées on the final stage of the Tour de France is, is really phenomenal. It's a huge step forward, a game-changer for, for women's cycling and we hope will be the first step in enabling um, women cycling to grow the commercial appeal, consumer appeal and media appeal that it, that it truly deserves. The news for me, it's, it's still just um, sinking in the, um, what it actually means for women cycling because it's, uh, it's not just a, a bike race, um, it's a significant uh, move in women cycling to, for ASO to put that, that event on in front of so many thousands of people, um, it just it st sets a standard too in women's cycling. I'm sure that a lot of other race organisers are going to follow and um, I think this is the, the turning point in women's cycling and we've been waiting for it for a long time, so it's quite significant. The wildcards for the 2014 Tour de France have been announced. There were four places available and they have gone to Cofidis, Bretagne Sèche Environnement, IAM Cycling, NetApp Endura. After years of trying, Bretagne finally get in which means that the Tour de France still has a regional team this year after the demise of Ouskatel. Unfortunately for the Breton riders and fans, the race will not be going anywhere near Brittany this year. Finally, transfer rumours have actually been converted into transfer news. Chris Horner has gone to Lamprey Merida, while Samuel Sanchez has signed for Team BMC. Horner will target the Vuelta and the Giro at Lamprey, leaving the Tour for Rui Costa, while Sanchez will hopefully play a vital part in Team BMC's Grand Tour team. 
Now behind me is the tallest building in the world and that can only mean one thing. Yes, we're in Dubai and we're here with GCN for the inaugural Dubai tour and make sure you watch our behind the scenes videos all this week on GCN. Our fruit and veg powered friend, Jurian Ryder, has dominated the GCN Strava Club of late. This week he was just 734 metres of height gain away from taking all three first places. However, our Strava member of the week this week is Freddie Jagger of Melbourne. Freddie took to Melbourne's Formula One circuit at Albert Park to do a few laps. Criterium anyone? Let's make it happen. We first saw the specialised Evade Aero helmet last road season when Mark Cavendish rode it to a number of victories including his 100th ever career win at the Giro d'Italia. Well now it's well and truly back on our radar after Zdinek Stibar won the Crossworlds wearing one. Aero helmets are in fashion as cycling moves increasingly towards a marginal gains philosophy where every second and every watt counts and the Evade is reputed to save 46 seconds for every 40 kilometers ridden when compared to a standard road helmet. When it comes to riding with my ex-professional colleagues Daniel Lloyd and Matt Stevens, I need all the help that I can get so I'm really looking forward to receiving a specialised evade so that I can gain 46 seconds on them straight away. 3, 2, 1, go! 45 seconds flat out. Fast and furious! We wanted you to share your photos of you using our training videos and we've picked three winners. Five to go, come on! Fast feet! This week on the channel, Monday Mechanicals, Daniel Lloyd shows you how to lock your bike correctly. Things to consider when locking your bike up is its location. Uh, it might be tempting to find a quiet alleyway because less thieves are going to see it, right? Tuesday, stuck with me. On Wednesday, inspired by the recent cyclocross worlds, we've got two cyclocross how-tos. Technical sections are generally where the difference is made in cyclocross races. Bart Wellens took us through one of the trickier features of the Hurst and Zolder course in Belgium. On Thursday, we've got the top 10 riders to look out for at the upcoming Tour of Oman and Tour of Qatar. On Friday, we've got the bikes of the 2014 World Tour. And on Saturday, we've got the first of our 2014 Pro Bikes. With its new strikingly bold blue and yellow Tinkoff Saxo livery. Tweet of the week goes to Ryan Trabant, who tweeted, yeah, with this photo despite having half of his leg missing, still managed to finish in 31st place at the Worlds. And now, it's the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's... Selfie of the week! First up in selfie of this week is Frederico Leos, who got this shot of himself with Naira Quintana at the recent Tour de San Luis. Arnav Kapoor got this shot of mine and Dan's and Matt's former teammate, Dan Craven. And finally, Emma Woodcock who shot this selfie with some rather fine company in the cycling cafe in Dubai. You'll have to try and get one with Matt this week, Emma. Thank you for joining us this week. Don't forget to check out Matt Stevens' reports from Dubai. Don't forget to like all our posts on Instagram, all our posts on Facebook, retweet all of our tweets, and subscribe to GCN on YouTube. It's free. You can't have that one. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> in spite of popular demand, I am back. Wicked. Sorry. That's it. <laughs> Wicked. Hi, I'm Paul and welcome to my GCN indoor cycling session. I will take you on a 35 minute cycling journey with a variety of intervals along the way. We will track our progression with 